Hello, mathematicians. I want to go over with you some vocabulary for the upcoming math derby. Uh, this is particularly to third grade, but some of these terms might be important terms for you to know in second, third, fourth, or even fifth. I know I've taught all those grades, and I remember seeing them all there before, so this is a great refresher for us getting ready. However, if you're getting ready for the math derby where I teach, these are words you need to know for third grade. So I wanted to make a video to explain them to you so that you could properly prepare yourselves for the upcoming math therapy. So we're going to go straight through them. I'm going to go over the word, the definition, and I'm going to kind of show you what it looks like because I want to make sure that you just don't know the word and definition, but you kind of have some understanding too. I think that will help make it stick. So let's get started. This one might be a little bit long, hopefully not too bad. First, we have the word factors. Um, and factors are numbers that are multiplied in a multiplication problem. And I have an example here. 6 times 4 equals 24. And these two numbers, 6 and 4, those are the factors. Those are the numbers that are multiplied. Now, if I were you going over this with me, what I would do is say the word with me and the definition. Read it along with me. That way it help makes it stick to your brain. Next, we have the word product. Product is the result of multiplying numbers, which basically means it's the answer to a multiplication question. 6 times 4 equals 24. 24 is the product. It's the result of multiplying numbers. Next, we have the word difference. And a difference is the answer when subtracting two numbers. I have an example here. 6 minus 4 equals 2. The answer to the uh, subtraction question is the difference. So the difference is the answer when subtracting two numbers. Next we have remainder. And a remainder is the amount, the amount left over after dividing. If I were to divide 7 divided by 3, 3 doesn't go into 7, but it gets close. And if I divide it by 2, that would be 6. Uh, because 3 times 2 is 6, which will give me 2 with a remainder of 1. 1 is what's left over. It's the remainder. Next is odd numbers. Um, we know that an odd number is a number that cannot be evenly divided by 2 and ends in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. I know in our class we look at the number in the 1's place. And if the number cannot be broken up, evenly on a couple of hands, then we know it is an odd number. Next we have even or even number. An even number is a number that can be evenly divided by 2 and ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 because we know that all those numbers we can build on equally on two hands. Next we're going to get into some shapes some geometry. We have a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. And a polygon, and that's actually going to be our next definition. Um, um, let's go to that one first and we'll come back. A polygon is a closed plane figure, which basically means flat, two-dimensional, formed by three or more line segments, which is the sides, that meet only at their endpoints. And that's the endpoints where they meet. Um, uh, so that would be a polygon. So all of these shapes up here are different kinds of polygons. A quadrilateral is a type of polygon that has four sides. So like a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a trapezoid, all quadrilaterals because they all have four sides. Next, another polygon is a triangle. A triangle is a polygon with three sides and three angles. You see our three sides, one, two, three. In our three angles, one, two, three. We can find an angle at each of the vertices. A sphere is a solid figure in the shape of a ball. So best, uh, the best way to think of a sphere is a ball. It's a 3D shape, a 3D figure, and that is a sphere. Next, we have a cube. A cube is a solid figure with six faces that are congruent squares. And we have, you can see three faces here. Think about a box or maybe a Rubik's Cube. Those are all cubes. They're solid figures and they have six faces. And it's a cube if all six are the same size. Next, we have a rectangle. It's a quadrilateral 
remember a quadrilateral, it's a polygon with four sides with four right angles, and that has to do with these corners, and we're going to go over those in just a minute. And the opposite sides are the same length. So in a rectangle, these two sides are the same length, and these two sides are the same length. Yes, that means a square is a rectangle, but a square is a special kind of rectangle. Next, we have a hexagon, and a hexagon is a six-sided polygon. It's, so basically, it's a closed shape with six sides. Hex means six. Next, we have perimeter, and a perimeter is the distance around a closed plane figure or region. Again, plane just means flat, 2D. So the distance all the way around it, that's the perimeter. Area is the number of square units need to cover a region. We have a rectangle here with four, um, four columns and three rows, and that area would be 12 square units because 12 times, because three times four is 12. So area is the number of square units needed to cover a region. Next, we have a line of symmetry. A line of symmetry is a line that divides a figure into two halves that match exactly. That means they're the same size. So this rectangle has a line of symmetry. Both sides are the exact same. Think about a butterfly. Congruent figures. Congruent figures are figures that have the same size and same shape. Both of these are the same size and the same shape. The reason I put them here, and this might be confusing, is I just turned this one. But they're still the same shape and they're still the same size. That makes them congruent. Next, we have a right angle. We heard this term when talking about a rectangle. A right angle is an angle that forms a square corner. We see it right here. It's like a perfect L. And so I have an example of one in a shape. In a square, we have four right angles, a rectangle as well. Next, we have fraction. A fraction is a number in the form of A over B that names part of an object or collection of objects. It compares two quantities or represents division. The big thing here, this is a fraction, and it's three-fifths, this fraction, so that would be three out of five. You'd be comparing three and five, and it represents division because it would be three divided by five. Numerator, the number written above the line in a fraction. So the numerator is the top number in a fraction. It's written above the line. And a denominator is the number written below the line in a fraction. It's on the bottom. The way I used to remember that is denominator starts with a D, just like down. It's the one on the bottom. Next, we have tenths. One out of ten equal parts of a whole. So this circle has ten equal parts. One part is a tenth. It's written like this, one over ten, because it's one tenth out of all of this whole. Next, still in fractions, is a mixed number. A mixed number is a number that is written using both a whole number and a fraction. So I have the whole number 2, and then I have the fraction 1 fourth. So you would read it 2 and 1 fourth. That's a mixed number. It's a number that's written using both a whole number and a fraction. PM, a name given to time between 12 noon and midnight. I think about this as after lunch, in the afternoon, all the way until midnight. AM is a name given to the time between midnight and noon. It's the morning. I have a clock here. It's 8, 10 a.m. It's in the morning. They have their coffee. They're trying to wake up. A.m. That's midnight and noon in the morning. Capacity. Capacity is the measure of how much a container can hold. So we have some containers. They all hold a different amount of liquids. Their capacity is different. That's, capacity is the measure of how much a container can hold. Estimate. That's to give an approximate number or answer. That means basically it's a guess, but it's a smart guess. I could ask you to guess or estimate 
how many pistachios are in that jar. But you're going to give an approximate number. You're going to try to make a really smart guess. A liter. In the metric system, it's a unit of capacity. It's how much something holds used to measure liquid. It's equal to a thousand milliliters. Milli means thousand. So we can measure things in liters. And it measures liquids. A foot, part of the English system, it's a customary unit of length equal to 12 inches. We see a ruler here and we count our inches. You can see the numbers one, two, three. So we're counting by inches. 12 of those makes a foot. Next we have a yard. It's a customary unit of length equal to three feet or 36 inches. So a yard would be three feet. Three rulers, 12, foot, 12 inch rulers, would make a yard. And we can see that I measured it out and showed you here. Next we have a meter. And this uses a different system. We don't use this system very much in the United States. This uses, it's a metric unit of length equals to a hundred centimeters. Centi means hundred, like a century is a hundred years. Next we have pound. It's a customary unit of weight equal to 16 ounces. 16 ounces equals pound. When you weigh yourself, you're using pounds. Multiplication. It's an operation that gives the total number when you put together equal groups. So here we have three equal groups of two. So three times two equals six. So remember, multiplication is putting together groups. The commutative property. It's a property of addition and multiplication that says changing the order of the elements being added or multiplied will not change the sum or the product. So three times two equals six. Two times three equals six. I change the order. Answer is the same. Same thing with addition. Four plus five equals nine. Five plus four equals nine. I change the order. The answer is the same. Next we have an array. An array is a rectangular arrangement of objects in rows and columns. Here I built an array. Three rows of five. Next we have a line. A line is a straight path that goes indefinitely in opposite directions. The reason I put two little arrows there is because a line actually technically never stops. It goes on and on. That's what indefinite means. Parallel lines are lines that never intersect. That means they never touch. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form right angles. And we learned what a right angle was already. You can see right angles right here, every place the lines intersect. Those are perpendicular lines. Two lines that intersect to form right angles. Next, we have a line segment. A line segment is a part of a line that has two endpoints. So if you just draw a line and you stop it, that's a line segment. It's a part of a line that has two endpoints, a beginning and an end. Array is a part of a line that has one endpoint and continues endlessly in one direction. So we see we have the endpoint and then it starts to go. So array is a part of a line that has one end point and continues endlessly in one direction. Next, we have a point. A point is an exact position often marked by a dot. So if I have a line, and I put a dot on it, that dot is called a point. That's an exact position, often marked by a dot. Next, we have a decimal point. A decimal point is a dot used to separate dollars from cents and ones from tenths in a number. We have an example here, $6.75. That little dot is the decimal point. It's a dot used to separate dollars, from cents and ones from tenths in a number. Next, we have a digit. A digit in the base 10 numeration system, one of the symbols of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, which can be used to write any number. 
So all of these are digits, and we use those to write numbers. Fact family. It's a collection of related addition and subtraction or multiplication and division facts made from the same numbers. So I have, two, I have some fact families here for multiplication and division. 3 times 5 equals 15. 5 times 3 equals 15. 15 divided by 3 equals 5. 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And really, it's almost going forwards and backwards. So it's a collection of related addition and subtraction or multiplic multiplication and division facts made from the same numbers. Ordered pair. Two numbers used to name a point on a coordinate grid. So this is a coordinate grid. I have a, I have a dot or a point, and the ordered pair is right here, two, th two and three. Because if I count over two and I go up three, I get the ordered pair. Two numbers used to name a point on a coordinate grid is an ordered pair. Data, sometimes said data. It's information gathered by observing, counting, or measuring. So if we asked a question and we asked people what their favorite sport is, the information we find out is data or data. So data is information gathered by observing, counting, or measuring. A tally chart is a chart on which data is recorded, and it has these tally marks on it. So of course we count them. So a tally chart is a chart on which data is recorded. A line plot is a display of data along a number line. So I have a number line. I may ask a question, how many hours did you spend reading over the break? And you would tell me, and we would track how many people. So on this one, I have one, two, three, four people read for three hours. One person read for six. Another person, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people read for two hours. So a line plot is a display of data along a number line. Range. The difference between the greatest and least numbers in a set of data. So I have two numbers here, 2 and 6. I put uh, points there. 2 is the least number, 6 is the greatest number, and the difference or range between 6 and 2 is 4. So the range is the difference between the greatest and least numbers in a set of data. And last, probability. Probability is a number from 0 to 1 that indicates the chance of something happening. If we flip a coin, you're going to get heads or tails. So you have to figure out what the probability would be that that would get happen. So again, probability is a number from 0 to 1 that indicates the chance of something happening. We're done. So this is a long video. It's something to watch and maybe help you study. I hope it helps. Until next time, happy mathing.